is what my fashion design language is. I lost a lot of money low key, high key out. This is a reason why I really like Mikel Arteta too. Uh, Arsenal definitely will win the match against Brighton Hove in Jesus' name. I believe that we're going to win the Premier Cup. I believe we can do it. Hello everyone. Um, my name is Zoe and I hope you're all well. Uh, I've decided that I want to do a little bit more of like a talk down, talk down, sit down, talking kind of uh, series about fashion and football because I actually don't really know anyone that talks about this kind of stuff, at least together. I don't have anybody to talk to about football, about Arsenal specifically, because I'm an Arsenal fan. Um, but I'm just going to try and do something like this, putting those things together and talking to you guys. And if you want to hear a bit more of this kind of content, then feel free to like and subscribe. And I am definitely going to do a couple more of these because i have a lot to say um yes so oh and before we get started if you sorry before we get started um i am a fashion design student so obviously i have a bit of interest in fashion so if you want to see my work you can check out my work instagram account which is at by Firasomi, and then my personal is just Firasomi me. It'll be up here or something. I'm in a little corner in my garden. Um, so yes, I hope you will enjoy. Um, so as I've just said, I am a fashion design student, um, and I currently study in London, and I'm going into my third year this September. But for me, my third year is a placement year so i will be doing an internship well multiple internships throughout the year um and i'm super excited because the first uh intern two internships that i've done up until now have been like atelier internships and this one will be a fashion design internship so it's going to be more like design stuff rather than actually making which is my first time doing that kind of stuff which will be really interesting um another thing i am 20 years old so i wouldn't say i have a ton of life experience but i have 20 years of it um yes and then the last important thing for this podcast i guess you could say about me is that I am a huge Arsenal fan um so I will mainly be talking about Arsenal in this I guess you could call it a podcast um so if you want to hear about Arsenal and then other a couple other teams that I'm interested in then keep watching so uh, I wanted to start off talking about fashion school because when I first started, there wasn't really much like content about what it would be like. So I just really went in blindsided. That's, I don't think that's the right word. Just with no idea what it would be like. And I had a lot of worries. Um, the main thing I was worried about was making friends. Um, because obviously you'd be going into that kind of situation alone and i have a twin sister so i've always been with my twin sister when it comes to making friends so it wasn't really too difficult but oh there's a butterfly um it wasn't really too difficult but i had this idea that going into university would be so incredibly difficult to make friends which is not true um and then the other worry that i had was just living in London alone and how expensive it is and what it would be like going to uni like 
because obviously I'd never had that experience before. It's my first time going to uni. I wasn't really sure what to expect. Um, but looking back at all my worries and what it's now, I'm going into my third year. It was it was never that deep. Like. I think I was just too worried. I had a lot of anxieties and after looking back and seeing and reflecting on what it was, I feel like the first year of university is probably the easiest year in terms of uh, socializing, meeting new people because everyone's meeting new people for the first time. Everyone's in this, a similar kind of mindset of oh, I want to make friends, so, yes. When it comes to making friends, I genuinely think that because you are in an environment, at least in my case, uh, of art school, fashion school, when you're in an environment of people that are kind of like-minded to you, you have a lot of the same interests given the fact that art isn't, maybe it's different for other kinds of university, but I feel like fashion art everyone's into art rather than like i don't know science i don't know if people like science as a hobby some people do respect um but with art it's a very creative thing which i think leads to being very open-minded and i think a lot of people um want to make friends so i don't think in your first year it would be too difficult to make friends going to an art school seeing as everyone's creative, everyone, in my experience, I was surrounded by a lot of kind people, so I wasn't too, wor well, I was worried, but once I actually put myself out there, um, I realized, like, hey, it's actually not that bad, um, and I'm so grateful for the people that I met. Uh, there are a lot of different ways that I met some of my friends, uh, one way is my student accommodation. So obviously, uh, when you go to university, there are specific accommodations that are linked to your university. And that means you can meet people that go to your university. So it's pretty easy to make friends that way. During freshers, there are so many events going around, especially in London. You can interact with other universities as well, seeing as it's like the London university group anyways um so yeah i met a lot of friends from like activities that be, that would be going on uh within our accommodation that was one way and then also um before we started university there was a lot of group chats going around and there was one for my accommodation against this is linked to my accommodation but i think they do it in terms of just university as well um and a girl shout out isabel one of my closest friends um she somehow found me in these group chats which have literally like over 200 to 300 people and we started talking and i can't lie i was a bit intimidated because i was like how is somebody who i don't know messaging me like so comfortably like she was voice messaging me and in my head, for some reason, like voice messaging is when you're really close to someone. I don't know, but she's just, she's that girl. Um, and then we met like on the one of the first days of being at our accommodation. We just clicked like that because, again, we both study fashion and we have a lot of the same beliefs. So that was that was one way that I made some friends. And then also... Um, Doriella, who you may have seen in my videos, she also posts YouTube videos, vlogs about just living in London and fashion school and ballet too. Shout out, Dori. Um, we actually are on the same course, but we had no idea. Um, and also we lived in the same block at the same accommodation we'd never met until our university had this event whereby all the students studying fashion design like across courses so fashion design and development our course um menswear women's wear and i think maybe there are a couple other courses too but we all gather together and it's kind of like 
at first you would think these events are kind of cringy, but like, I think it's necessary in order to meet new people. Um, and we met at that event towards the end when everyone was leaving. And then after that, I don't think we talked for a while until randomly, like we would just see each other all the time at university and then we became friends. And we have a lot of the same interests too. So I feel like, I think the, what's it called, common denominator of all of these things was uh, putting yourself out there maybe because obviously we all have the decision to just stay in our rooms and not really go anywhere and to freshers events even going to the common area at my accommodation as well as going to that event that I met Dory at I was so afraid I don't know why I think when I was younger I had a lot of social anxiety um but because I had a twin sister like it didn't really matter too much but I think in these moments I was not necessarily desperate but I really really wanted to have friends um and despite being so afraid of like not being cool enough or like I don't know just people judging me I went and eventually I made friends and it did take some time like I think me and Dory only got close like after the first term and I had a lot of people that I knew but I wasn't like super close to in the sense that I could fully be myself but I think it just takes time and it's in my opinion or maybe I'm being a bit naive but I think it's kind of inevitable to make friends you know oh my gosh there's so many bugs sorry um I think it's kind of inevitable to make friends at least if you put yourself out there and you talk to people and if you are kind then you should be fine no most people are a lot kinder than you think um and putting yourself in situations where you can meet new people honestly i think friendships always form so yeah that's that in terms of making friends in terms of london being extremely expensive honestly I crawled on my hands and knees through first year. I had saved up a lot of money. Well, it wasn't a lot, but enough money, like working part-time over the summer to start off in first year with, oh, with a good, like a decent amount. But the thing about London and freshers when you first start university is there are a lot of events going on and i bought tickets for a lot of events and they were expensive and i ended up not going to a lot of them because i just couldn't be asked um or i had nobody to go with and it was i regret it i lost a lot of money low key high key actually um and a lot of them weren't worth it in my opinion but i think that's looking in hindsight because I don't really enjoy clubbing or just anything of the sort um, and I realized that after going to a couple but London is expensive the the only way I think that I truly was able to get through it was the fact that I bought all of my groceries from Lidl um, it was decent it wasn't far far away but it was like a 15 to 20 minute walk and coming back holding groceries like obviously that's not the best but it had to be done and then after the first time and I'd run out of all of my money um I started working at a bar which was honestly the worst job of my life but it helped me get through the rest of the year to some extent um but yeah, money management, especially if you're living in London, is like key. It's essential. I did not have good money management. And after first year realizing how expensive London is and the fact that I cannot afford it, I moved back home um, for second year, which I honestly think was the best decision for me because I don't have to pay rent, um, free food, and I don't live too far from London via train. 
Uh, it's still expensive, but the positives outweigh the negatives. So that's that. Um, in terms specifically, fashion school expenses. Oh my goodness. Um, when I was applying to university, I was told multiple times via the internet that fashion design is one of the most expensive courses to study. And in my mind, that didn't make any sense because I really believed that university was university and like everyone's probably paying a similar amount. Absolutely not. Um, fashion design requires so many like resources, resources, just things um, that you need. So two pairs of scissors, one fabric, one paper, then you have all your tools that go from sewing machine and then you have all your pattern cutting tools then you have to buy all of your twirling fabrics and then your final fabrics and obviously you want to get good quality final fabrics because it makes the garment look better obviously and then yeah that all adds up to just thousands if i'm being honest thousands of pounds um it's a lot and you just have to be really really resourceful when it comes to finding stuff that you need for university i was not fully prepared when we first started um they did give us a list of everything that they believed that we would need but once i got there there was a lot more that i needed to buy and at the time so we had a school shop I would have to get the things that I would need from that school shop and I'm pretty sure it was slightly a bit more expensive than if I were to have bought it online but obviously I needed it, needed it immediately so there's that um, honestly if you want to study fashion design keep that in mind but honest I think the way to prepare for that is before university studying fashion design is buy as much as you can online before you start um, low-key maybe possibly even the things that you think that you might not need apart from like there are a lot of different kinds of scissors that you can get but honestly you just need a pair of fabric scissors and paper scissors so that's just an example but I think they're like rotisserie scissors that some people get, but I don't think you really need that. Um, but yeah, if you are able to get everything that you would need online, that is best. At my university, they also give us a twirling fabric allowance. Um, and in first year, it's not much. In second year, it's around six meters. And that's uh calico and then any of the fabric that they have in the shop the school shop but you can't buy it which is interesting but yes there's that it's very expensive more expensive than you would think and more expensive than you would think again like just i don't know how i could possibly budget for it that's one thing that i've constantly been thinking about and going into final year after this year I think I'm just going to have to have, oh, I don't know if you can hear that, um, but I think I'm just going to have to have a lot of money saved. Um, at schools like Central St. Martins, they offer, I think brands offer a lot of scholarships and grants and loans and all of that stuff. And I don't know if they really offer it that much to students at London. At London College of Fashion um, but that's something that I have to research so we'll, we'll see about that but another thing that I think um, this is a reason going slightly moving towards uh, football but not really um, is mindset this is a reason why I really like Mikel Arteta too because he's very heavy on the mindset approach when it comes to coaching, coaching, managing his team, and 
having a good mindset a strong mindset a growth mindset an open mindset is something that my secondary school really really uh taught us a lot about but i didn't realize the importance of it until i got to university and i think studying fashion design and also learning a second language has also really helped me to uh develop my mindset as well as to improve my mindset um when you are making clothes and when you are designing clothes there's a lot of failure that is necessary in order for you to get the best final result um and in my first year my first term i was so afraid of going into uni why i don't know i was just really intimidated by everyone and everything and how big the building was and the fact that i was alone and i didn't have any friends on my course i do not know what's going on over there um but i would only ever go to university whenever i had class so that was that for me um but then after i did my first project and i realized what the process is of fashion design and making toiles and adjusting and improving each and every single time um that was when i realized that failure and failed attempts are necessary in order to get to my desired final outcome um i compared myself a lot to others but i don't think it was in a toxic way rather uh obviously there are some a lot of very good designers at my university and i would always see them around and i'd see their work and i genuinely thought to myself hey i want to be like that or i want to be even better and that really motivated me to work extremely hard um and i feel like if you look at my work from where i first started to my most recent pieces that i've made there is a visible improvement in my work i think one thing though that i'm still discovering is what my fashion design language is because i feel like if you look at a lot of people's work there's a certain vibe that is there i don't really truly believe that i have that yet i know there's certain things that i really enjoy like having extremely unique well specific and strong subtle details i like i really like that in a lot of the clothing that i make and that's something that i look to always do when designing but i feel like i lack some sort of consistency which is something that i will be working on for the next couple of years before i graduate um so that my final collection eats that's what i want um but yes growth mindset looking at other people and just admiring them i have a lot of my friends this year i am so grateful to them because they are such hard working people and they really motivated me to be better and i think that's why this year a lot of my work i am proud of um but i still want to improve and i know that there's a lot of room for improvement which is why i'm excited for this upcoming placement year because i'll really be able to uh explore the things that i've learned and develop the things that i've learned in a situation that actually matters like because obviously i'm working for a brand you know so we'll see how that goes um another thing is the fact that despite the fact despite being so scared to go to uni this year i obviously utilize uh the resources that we have because obviously we pay for it and we are at an extremely nice campus that has tons of resources despite it not being like fully completed um this year i really prioritized getting help because a problem that i had when i was younger was that i was so afraid to get lots of help um from the teachers from the tutors from the technicians i was extremely scared to do so Yep. That's okay. <laughs> It's okay. Um yeah, what was I saying? Yeah, so at my university there are a lot of really 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 helpful staff.
and I'm so glad that this year I was able to build the courage even though like it might not seem that deep to other people but for some reason I was just so afraid but I'm so glad that I've been able to build up the courage to actually ask for help because these are professionals these people are stars in their field um ooh, they have worked with the likes of Alexander McQueen and just amazing designers and they obviously know what they're talking about and they're there to help so that is something that I really prioritize this year I'm still I'm still a little bit scared of a couple of them even though I know for a fact that they aren't scary at all I'm just a wuss um but yeah that has happened okay if we start talking about um football now Arsenal oh my goodness it's the start of the Premier League. Well, we're two weeks in now. Um, and Arsenal... Arsenal have been doing extremely well. Um, we have won our first two matches against Wolverhampton and Aston Villa. 2-0 both, I'm pretty sure. Um, and I don't really remember much about the Wolverhampton match, but Bukayo, Saka, and Havertz, they both scored. Um, and one of them, I'm pretty sure, was a corner kick to Havertz by Saka, and then Saka, oh my goodness, his left foot shot, that was absolutely beautiful, if anyone can remember. But um, that happened. That match, I believe, in my opinion, was extremely messy. Um, Gabriel Jesus and one random defender from Wolverhampton were having a little bit of a tussle. Like, my man's actually low key tried to choke Jesus, if I remember correctly. That was absurd. It was funny to watch, but the fact that there was no yellow card raised really raised my eyebrow in that moment. Um, and then. If we talk about the match against Aston Villa, oh my goodness, that was an absolutely beautiful match. I was in shock the entire time. I, I was on the ground like the monster that I become when I'm watching Arsenal play. It's, it's kind of scary. Um, but to start off, the outfits that they wore when they were entering the pitch, they were wearing these Jamaica-inspired like vomit jack not bomber jacket like windbreakers and in the moment like i don't know in my opinion it didn't really look like it made much sense but i'm sure there was some sort of maybe historical value that i wasn't aware of but when i saw the photography afterwards oh my goodness it looked amazing it was so 90s vibes and i was just like maybe i'll put a picture in here i don't know but the pictures looked sick it was so cool um and then the match happened. Apparently, apparently, but I know it's kind of a fact that away matches at the Aston Villa Stadium are some of the hardest to win. I don't know if it's like there's something spiritual going on or just the vibe in general, but it's hard. And Arsenal lost their last match against Aston Villa, which literally lost us the Premier Cup, the Premier Trophy, whatever, the championship. And... This match was so important for us to win, and we did it. But the first half of the match, honestly, there was one player who stood out to me, and I didn't know his name before until he really showed us, ah, until he really showed us who he was. And that was Morgan Rogers from Aston Villa. I had no idea who he was, but there was one player on that pitch who was really pressing our midfield and our attack, and I was confused we weren't playing well but it was more so that he was just so good that nothing was working nothing was working and shout out to Matt, to that guy because he played really well and i will always give my my tees my tops i don't know to defenders because they have a special place in my heart he was so good um but then second half happened oh also ollie watkins his missed or failed attempts at goal that was shocking honestly they were really good shots but 
first one he missed one and then david rea god bless my man's not my man's but like god bless him um he was amazing in goal he really was man of the match i was on the floor when he saved those goals that was insane that was beautiful it was majestic it was amazing it was wonderful it was marvelous god bless him because he really saved us this match um let me go into the second half where trossard the great and mighty trossard he really came through and showed us who he was i did not understand when i was watching it they said his first touch i did not mean i did not understand or realize what they meant by his first touch they meant his first touch on the pitch was a goal is that not insane is that not crazy and then his celebration oh my goodness in the moment i wanted to replay and replay and replay and i've watched that celebration over and over again because that was absolutely amazing that was absolutely amazing it was gorgeous it was clean it was just so good so shout out to trossard there's speculation not speculation but like everyone's saying that he needs to start on the pitch i honestly don't know what to say to that because every single time he shows us that he's that guy that he's really that guy um and some people are saying that he needs like the momentum of the game to actually like get in and make a difference rather than when he's actually starting on the pitch i don't know but regardless he's really good saliba 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 amazing defender amazing defender uh he made this incredible run like recovery run after aston villa like got away with the ball and were charging down the pitch and the tackle it was so beautiful it was so good and i've watched again i've watched that over and over again because it was just so clean and beautiful and his afterwards i was just like wow I believe that we're going to win the Premier Cup. I believe we can do it. It's not that it's inevitable because obviously Man City are insane, but with the additions that Arteta is bringing into our team, we've got Calafiori, we've got Mikel Marino, and then they're saying that they're going to bring in, like people are speculating that he's going to bring in like some other strikers, but I don't know this place. But regardless... Calafiori adding to our defense. We've got what? Gabriel, Saliba, Calafiori, Tomiyasu, um, Zinchenko, and um, Ben White, and maybe someone else. I can't remember. But that defensive unit, obviously, they're not all on the pitch at the same time, but the fact that they're all so strong. Calafiori in the last 10 minutes of the match that was a beautiful performance he really showed us that like he's that guy and he can stop the goals uh he has a new chant but like obviously I wouldn't say it's like official but when you put him in the back of the net da -da -da, Calafiori like it doesn't something 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 I'm so excited to see him like actually play and make a difference like I'm not saying that his last 10 minutes didn't make a difference but we were too nil ahead um and he was on there for 10 minutes but he did stop a lot of breaks so shout out to him um and ben white too he's he's so cool um then we have saka and thomas party goal that was really really satisfying to watch thomas party was genuinely in the right place at the right time so good and i can't remember if i'm missing anything else Raya. I've already spoken about Raya, but like Raya. He was so good. And like I am like such a big fan of him because when I guess all goalkeepers are like this, maybe I don't know, but when we are in a good position, he moves further up and he's like an ex extra man on the pitch. I just love to see that. I just think that's really cool. Also, back to Saliba, he out of 84 passes he made, he completed 83 isn't that insane like that's actually really 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 insane and there's a lot of debate about whether he's the best center back in football in the premier league at the moment 
against against i don't want to put them up against each other because i love them both ah um van dyke they're both so cool i love them both i, I know van dyke is playing on liverpool whatever but who cares it was a good it was a good game and they're both amazing and i i they're just they're just so good oh another thing i finally understand what it means to be offside um i know i've been a fan for a while and i only just got it but i understood and if we're going to talk about offside we're going to have to talk about the man U versus brighton and hove match because that was honestly i don't want to say appalling but there are a lot of players on that team that i love um okay i don't love rashford but i really really love my man's um Kobe Mainu. <sighs> offside, guys. I'm pretty sure they scored two goals, but they both did not, did not count because they were offside. And if they were, they would have won the match. What was the score? Like 2 what? 2 1? 2 1, I, I believe, yes. It was such a shame. It was such a shame because I don't think they played amazingly, but those two goals that they got. It was like so perfect and you know what i called it i called it when i saw that it was offside i called it um but yeah that's that um oh last thing last thing sorry this is a lot longer than i expected it to be but i have joined fantasy premier league again i don't know that much about football other than arsenal but i wanted to see what this whole thing is about uh I didn't really know much about it. I just heard it mentioned a couple of times and then figured out that it was a game and like the official Premier League game. And I've joined. So I'm going to share with you all my team from last week and then also the score that I got and what we're doing for this weekend because i need i want to do well i want to do well so last week game week two i got 78 points in total not terribly the best the highest was 154 so good to them um and the average was 69 so i got above average that is pretty good for me for my first time ever trying to do this thing um so in goal we had david raya of course he got me 10 points we had saliba in defense six points alexander arnold trent oh i did watch the liverpool match against i don't know who it was and they won i'm pretty sure then we have lissandro martinez from man united and then tyreek mitchell from crystal palace they both got me one point um i again don't really know much about these players but i tried my best um we have bukayo saka in attack with well in midfield with Mitoma from Brighton Hove, which I have to take him out this weekend because we're playing them. Um, we have Son, who played amazingly against Everton. Goodness me. Um, so he got me 32 points because I captained him. Then we have Rashford as well, who got me two points. Didn't really enjoy his performance in the game. James Madison, who got me six points. And Ollie Watkins, who got me two points. Uh, that was my mistake, obviously. Arsenal played against well, um, against Aston Villa, so that wasn't really start smart of me, but I realise that now. Um, and then in um, my subs, I've got Martinez, who is the goalkeeper for Aston Villa. Again, that was dumb of me. I don't know. I'm sorry. Uh, we have Van der Ven, Mickey Van der Ven from the Tottenham Hotspurs. Nine points, Zaxi and Vardy, who got me one and two points. I am still figuring this thing out. Um, we're going to get there, hopefully. I still don't really know what the significance of it is. Uh, I'm pretty sure some people play in, in like friendship groups. I don't know anyone who likes Fantasy League, so <laughs> I'm a one-man team. Anyways, for this weekend, I had to make a lot of sacrifices in terms of points, um, but I think they will pay off. Uh, I tried to be financially... Uh, smart and clearly we know that i don't know if i'm very good at that but i tried my best um we have some new additions to the team 
So still we have Raya, Saliba, Alexander, uh, Trent and Martinez. But we have swapped someone out for Gvardival from Man City. Uh, then we ha oh my gosh, there was a bug. Um, then we have Saka, Rogers from Aston Villa, Son of course, and we have Mo Salah now, <laughs> Smith Rowe and Watkins. Mo Salah cost me a lot of points, um, but I really believe that this team can get me some good points this week. I'm putting my trust in them. I would have loved to have Holland, despite being an Arsenal fan, yes, whatever. Ah, oh my gosh, there's so many bugs. But I'm gonna stand my ground. I don't think I need him on my team to do great. We will get there, we will get there. Um, yes, so that is all I have to say. Um, I enjoyed doing this. It took me a lot longer than I expected. I've had to film that this is my third time filming because first time, uh, something happened. I can't remember. Second time, my mic was off the whole time. So if my mic is not working, I will have to do something unthinkable things. But yes, this was this week's episode of Fashion Football. Um, I hope you all enjoy your week. Uh, Arsenal definitely will win the match against Brighton, Hove in Jesus' name. Um, I pray that God watches over my entire team and I pray against all injuries. Um, I hope you guys also enjoy watching whoever team you support. If it's not Arsenal, um, good for you. Uh, no, I take that back. But I hope you all enjoyed listening to this. Uh, like and subscribe if you like. Follow me on Instagram if you like. Um, yes, I guess that's all I have to say. Bye-bye.